Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how you can paint in black and white or grease eye. It's um, one of the underpainting methods in oil painting. I've decided to restructure some of my videos and um, put more information in for you to have a better understanding of the oil painting techniques. I have an extensive blog on my website veronikasar.com um, you can read the articles on the, the oil painting techniques section of my blog indirect oil painting technique is a classical approach to oil painting it's uh, about creating an underpainting in a single color and then uh, layering the colors in subsequent layers and this method has uh, variations as well it could be done in black and white only or in low chroma greens the grisaille oil painting technique allows the artist to develop values in shades of gray values are more important than um, getting the colors right because values express the three-dimensional effect or the illusion of something being around on a flat surface the same is true for painting in low chroma green grays you can find many classical art studies in art museums when artists uh, painted in grays they made uh, first versions of a finished uh, full color painting uh, painting in grays these are two versions of the adalisk painting completed by the 19th century french artist and uh, usually uh, this gray monochrome painting looks like a finished artwork on its own right it just wasn't the case back in the 19th century and earlier but now uh, it could become a finished uh, painting from a technical standpoint it's painted on a tinted warm brown surface so this warmth shows through the shades of gray each uh, painted layer must be very dry before continuing painting. If you paint over the wet layer, you not only mix the colors you don't want to mix, but you also make the paint fragile and easy to crack in the future. Grisaille means gray in French. It's an oil painting technique that has been used by artists for centuries. This black and white uh, painting uh, means painting in monochrome or shades of gray usually it refers to creating uh, the underpainting in grays sometimes other low chroma colors can be added to mix uh, this value range going from black to white I use titanium white mixed with some black and a little bit of burnt sienna. It gives warmth uh, to black. So why do you need to learn this oil painting technique? It's very simple. It's a very valuable exercise uh, to see values as opposed to color when you create volume. It trains the eye to see and paint a wide ra range of tones. In this painting by a very known still life artist, the him, you can see parts of the painting that reveal uh, gray-green sections of the underpainting. I think the color wore off and it just reveals uh, the solid underpainting. I've done an, uh, black and white underpainting you know working on portraits and still life and I can say that it works better in still life painting in my opinion because when you uh, shape the objects in uh, black and white you kind of get rid of some of the light uh, present in white canvas and it's not always suitable for portrait painting I think it depends on subject uh, and you know the overall idea for 
the portrait painting. It's just sometimes when I underpaint in black and white, I lose uh, so much light that I kind of have to re-establish it. And it's not the same as uh, painting on warm brown underpainting. I often add a little bit of uh, warm brown into my uh, mix of black and white uh, to make it a little bit warmer. Painting in um, shades of gray basically means an underpainting for a color oil painting. It's like a preparation for a color oil painting and you can think of it as say drawing in pencil only to develop the correct uh, distribution of values then you proceed to the color stage in this painting i am just sticking to painting in black and white meaning that it's my final product as opposed to just the underpainting also a lot of times this uh, painting in shades of gray is called the indirect oil painting technique uh, because um, direct oil painting means uh, painting in full color from the beginning and when we uh, do a lot of prep work uh, it's considered indirect way of painting What I like about painting in black and white is the fact that it helps me uh, focus on values as opposed to color. Uh, most students have a very hard time translating color into values. So this is a very important exercise to painting in just uh, a couple of colors and, develop and developing uh, shades of gray. Oftentimes, I work uh, from two pictures. I use Photoshop and basically I have two pictures lined up of, um, you know, my original photograph and then I convert it to black and white to see a range of values. I wanted to have a temporary feel in this painting, that's why I completed the background first and it was painted in acrylic paint, in gold acrylic paint. And, um, when you start painting in oil, you cannot really go back and uh, mix acrylic paint with oil paint. So I make sure I'm done with my background first and um, then I begin uh, painting in oil um, and I start by painting the face first. One of the rules in painting is to focus on the shadows and basically start uh, from painting the shadows first. 
uh, but I also like to focus on the eyes first and fill them in approximately before I continue with focusing on the shadows and uh, painting the entire face. To paint in black and white, I use three colors. I'm using titanium white, ivory black, and, uh, and burnt sienna. Um, as I said before, I just add a little bit of burnt sienna into my black and I mix the uh, colors. The first layer is always rough for me. Um, but I, uh, I try to follow my guide, my outlines, and I fill in the shapes close to what I see. It just, I don't get as much variation in my first layer, but I do want to get major lights and darks in place um, before I continue uh, painting the second and the third layer. So I keep uh, mixing the darker shades uh, for the shadows that I see in the face. Um, I paint them first and uh, after that I mix uh, slightly lighter uh, shades, uh, filling in uh, the spaces right next to the shadows. Also, I wanted to have this play between uh, warm uh, golden background and uh, cool figure. I think it makes it look different and contemporary. I also like distribution of light on the model's face and I watched for the light uh, hitting one side of her face and hair and um, I think it looked very beautiful and that's why I'm painting uh, this image. One of the secrets to realist uh, painting is the treatment of edges. Um, most edges need to be quite soft, with just a few edges being hard to bring our attention uh, to those edges. I always try to soften my edges before I quit uh, working for a day because you know the paint dries and um, then you cannot really, you cannot rework it. That's why it's important to use a very nice soft brush and uh, brush over the edges uh, lightly every time you, you want to finish uh, working on your image. When I get to painting uh, the second layer and the third and so on, I mainly focus on the transitions between the shadows and the lights. Um, because the first layer is rough, um, I try to find subtle um, shades of gray between those darks and the highlights. And it takes most of my time because every session I see more things and I see uh, more transitions between the tones. Also, I uh, begin developing uh, the details. And if you notice, I don't place my strokes aimlessly. Um, each stroke has a particular direction following the muscle structure. You've got to know uh, the basic anatomy structure to place the correct strokes. Also, I constantly think of uh, two things. Uh, basically, where is my lightest light and where is my darkest dark? And I keep comparing uh, those uh, two notes with the rest of my painting because it's easier to make too many highlights or in reverse, it's easier to darken everything and uh, there is not that much uh, variation in the face. 
um, painting the skin tones is difficult and um, painting in black and white it gives you a chance to develop your understanding of subtle transitions in tones. Uh, obviously, I use a sm much smaller brush when I paint uh, the details like the eyes and um, I try to fill in the rest of the face using a wider brush. I often step back and look at my painting from the distance and I compare it to my photograph to see how close I'm getting in the in development of my shades of grey. Also I keep looking at the anatomy and fixing small mistakes. And just remember that I'm placing whenever I do this these videos my camera at extreme angles that's why uh, it might not look anatomical like the face or the figure might not look anatomically correct because of that but if i place my camera uh, straight up uh, the features look uh, much better also as i uh, begin adding just a little bit of oil cold press uh, linseed oil to make my paint flow but I use just a little bit of it because it weakens the paint. on the same fundamentals uh, painting the painting large areas in darker shades first and um, basically making uh, large uh, blocks of uh, shapes and then I uh, mark uh, the highlights where I see them and after that I create transitions between the darks and the lights and from the right hand side that's why her face and her hair um, look much lighter on the on the right and i'm trying to capture that Once um, this layer dries, I go back with uh, a liner brush and I try to paint uh, teeny tiny hairs and uh, flyaways.
I often rotate my uh, panel to make the strokes in the right direction. This is super important in painting, uh, making the right kind of stroke. Otherwise, everything looks like a painted mattress. You know, there is not much uh, difference. You create volume not only by mixing a range of shadows, a range of values. You also create volume by uh, placing the strokes in the right direction. And I make final touches on her face, um, strengthening the lights on the right side of the face. final painting thanks for watching guys uh, please like my video subscribe to this channel and you can also follow me on social media including instagram and facebook all the links are given in the show notes but today I'd like to share how I created this image. I painted it during the COVID lockdown. And as you can see, it's quite different from my other paintings uh, because I played with textures and surfaces a lot. At the same time, it looks uh, more crude uh, than usual. <laughs> it also turned from light to dark during this uh, a lockdown period I think it was more than 50 days of sitting at home and uh, painting this I wanted to depict a couple symbolizing the universal love and I wanted to paint it for quite a, some time but I couldn't find uh, two people who could pose for me in the pose that I wanted and um, I just couldn't find the models and I was so lucky when I found the photograph on Pixabay it was so close to what I wanted to depict in this painting that I mean I I was just uh, uh, happy uh, finding this image and that's how I began uh, working on it. Unfortunately, uh, when I work from someone else's reference, uh, it becomes really hard because uh, a lot of information is missing and information I mean uh, like lights and darks, uh, I don't see uh, enough colors or value changes and um, it becomes a very difficult exercise in achieving what I normally can achieve. I pre-mixed my paint um, using uh, titanium white, ivory black and a little bit of burnt sienna and um, I started painting working from the shadows into the light. At first I wanted the image to be light and airy, that's why I painted the wings white at first and I thought that I would uh, make the figures quite light as well with the light uh, background. But as I kept going, uh, it kept changing and um, the end result ended up being uh, quite different from my original idea. I found it very difficult to paint from uh, someone else's picture because I really couldn't see um, the muscle structure of the face and um, I think because the image was photoshopped so much so um, that there was not a lot of information left for me to uh, paint from. 
so that was my biggest challenge uh, working on this. Gold is the element of God's creation. It's a symbol of love, illumination, abundance, and passion. And I used a gold acrylic paint to create parts of the background that reflect the color. Wings don't grow from people's back here. Uh, rather, I wanted them to be part of the spirit or the heart that you see uh, right in the center of the painting. I really liked how this play of black and gold was used in Spanish art, and I borrowed this idea uh, for my painting. As to creation of this image, uh, once again, uh, it was a very close match to what I wanted to paint. And um, I just added wings. And also, I wanted to paint the heart in the middle of the painting. And at first, I just reserved the space for the heart and I painted the key. Um, but then I thought that it didn't quite work. It was too kitschy and I uh, changed the, the shape of the heart towards the end of my painting. Also, uh, you can see yellow is my background. It's actually acrylic uh, paint, uh, rich gold um, paint that I used before I started painting in oils. I applied it and I let it dry for a couple of days to make sure it's totally dry. Um, and then everything else is painted with uh, oil paint. Thank you.
And here you can see that I have started changing the color of the wings. I basically sketched out uh, the drawing of the feathers, how they needed to, to stack uh, together against each other. And um, then I tried to create uh, the softness that we see in the feathers. I did it uh, with the short uh, painterless strokes and I used a little bit of uh, linseed oil to blend the edges and to add some fl flow into my paint. And here you see me uh, painting the heart. I just uh, I, I just started painting it uh, without any preliminary drawing or sketching, and uh, I kept working on it um, until it was done. Also during the painting process I used um, a spray bottle and I sprayed some uh, Gamsol over the finished uh, layer and that's why you see drips of uh, paint on the figures. I let it dry and I, I think it gave me this unusual texture and I as a final layer, I started uh, painting those uh, veins and um, floral shapes on top of the figures. I felt like the image wasn't complete without these um, textures and I wanted to add those textures into the body at the same uh, type of branches and uh, leaves as I, I painted in the head and the heart. And I think uh, it tied everything together and I felt like um, it was time just uh, to quit and uh, let it be the way it is now. If you have a question, you can let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video.
I appreciate every single one of you. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. Take care. Bye-bye.